screwdriver. Make sure everything is where you want it. Reach up there and pull those belts tight one more time. Go and green next time by. This is the Scrubbing Tires Podcast. All right. Yeah. I got pumped up with that introduction, man. You did a good job with that is one. Is it just because you're sitting there <laughs> seeing yourself next to your car? <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> man, I think I think we've heard that about 2,000 times now. <laughs> God damn, oh. I look good. <laughs> God damn it, that looks good right there. <laughs> All right, everyone. Uh, we didn't come up with a nickname uh, for the Scrubbanites or whatever we're calling you, but either way, thank you for joining again. Happy Monday. Happy day after uh, Halloween, almost at Thanksgiving, but happy first day of November to everyone. The Brady Bunch is back here. Jacob, Jordan, and myself back again uh, for episode 19, one nine. So almost made it to the twenties and we titled this one, the paper clip did not disappoint and oh. you should know what we're talking about. <laughs> yep. Oh yeah. So we will go ahead and get into it. We had all three series NASCAR series racing this weekend. So we have a lot to talk about. Uh, so I'll lead us off with the Camping World Truck Series Weekend Recap, the United Rentals 200 at Martinsville. Uh, qualifying again, mathematical equation, line them up by points, uh, wins, whose girlfriend is better looking, the whole thing, whatever. So the hell they, <laughs> however they do it. Uh, qualifying, John Hunter Nemechek, Todd Gillen, Ben Rhodes, Sheldon Creed, Matt Crafton. Um, I honestly didn't watch uh, but the last five laps of this race, which is basically all you needed to see. But anyways, uh, give you a quick rundown of stage one, stage two, and then get into the winner and uh, look ahead for next weekend for these guys and gals. Uh, stage win, stage one went to Todd Gilliland and then Sheldon Creed, John Hunter Nemechek, Ben Rhodes, Matt Crafton. And then stage two, more of the same, just kind of flip-flopping some positions, and Johnny Sauter made his way up there. But Todd Gilliland also won stage two. John Hunter Nemechek finished uh, second in stage two. Sheldon Creed, Johnny Sauter, and Matt Crafton. And then I believe it was in stage two, uh, without looking at the notes here, John Hunter Nemechek got uh, punted out of the way and wrecked. Um, so that had serious playoff implications, but he had locked himself in on points anyway, so it wasn't a must-need win situation for him. Uh, but anyways, uh, the last couple laps, uh, geez, they were three wide. Um, I, I can't even remember what turn it was. It happened so quickly. But you had Stuart Friesen up there. You had Zane Smith, uh, and I, I believe Sheldon Creed was up there, everybody. But uh, three wide, which is typical short track. That's what you want to see coming to, or at least I do, um, coming to a checkered flag. Um, and car spinning, beating, banging fenders, smoke's going everywhere, everything. But uh, Zane Smith ultimately snuck in there. Uh, I shouldn't say snuck because obviously he had a good enough car to be up there to contend for the win. But anyways, uh, Zane Smith won, Austin Hill uh, who had exciting news this week. I don't know if you guys saw that. He's joining Richard Childress Racing in the Xfinity full-time next year, so good for him. Mm -hmm. Seems like a good guy. Uh, he finished second, Tanner Gray third, Chandler Smith third, and Matt Crafton rounded out, out your top five. And uh, Matt Crafton and Sheldon Creed exchanged some words uh, on pit road there. I thought they were going to go fist to cuffs, but they didn't. Uh, but anyways, yeah, so I like Zane Smith. He's an old JRM driver. Um, and I think that was only his fourth win ever. So, uh, honestly, I had to race his way in. You, lo you love to see that, and GMS guys. So, again, excited for that. So, with that, your championship four for next weekend, uh, Friday, I believe, is when they race. Uh, Zane Smith, Ben Rose, Matt Crafton, and John Hunter Nemechek. So, should be a good one for them, and I uh, don't think they'll disappoint. So, that was your truck series uh, recap, and I'll pass to Jordan for the Xfinity. Yeah, buddy. All right. Um, yeah, I love this track. I love this weekend, but even still, I was Saturday was a pretty busy day, so I didn't really get a chance to actually watch this race. Um, went to the Avs game, and then had a well. First, I had a friend of mine's kid's birthday party, which was more of an adult birthday party. It was kind of funny, but um, uh, yeah. And then we went to the Avs game, but I did catch the highlights of this afterwards because it was win and get in for most of the drivers. So, uh, pretty exciting coming down to the end. Uh, but we'll kind of go by stage here. So stage, uh, well, lineup wise, you had Austin Cindric on the pole. Ty Gibbs was in second. Uh, third was AJ Allmendinger. Justin Haley was fourth. And then Justin Allgaier and Michael Bennett were in row three. 
And then coming into stage one, your results, top five was Josh Berry coming in fifth. Uh, AJ Allmendinger was fourth. Justin Allgaier was third. Daniel Hamrick was second. And Austin Sindrick won first stage one. Uh, stage two, uh, Austin Sindrick was fifth. Jeb Burton was fourth. Ty Gibbs was third. Harrison Burton was second. And Noah Gregson was first. Then down to the end, they had a late caution. Imagine and then it that. was yeah, imagine that. Ed, uh, green, white, checkered. Noah Gregson was out front. Austin Sendrick was trying his ass off to get underneath him, and he drove him down into that corner going into term three. And I for sure thought he wasn't going to make it stick for how hard he drove that car into that corner. And he made it stick. And then Noah Gregson just, I mean, barely beat him. Uh, it was like one of the closest finishes in, in Xfinity race history there, I think it was, what you were yeah, telling me, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah like, it's, Six one thousands of a second. Yeah, it was crazy. Something cr I couldn't even tell, like, honestly, that he won the race. I mean, they were so darn close. So, uh, rounding out your top five was Justin Algaier. And then coming in fourth was Sam Meyer. Uh, third was Daniel Hemrick. Second was Austin Sendrick. And then getting the win was Noah Gragson. Yeah. And we were kind of talking about it before we started the podcast here that he was uh, shotgun and beers on, uh, on the, that was awesome. On the wall. It was awesome. He's yeah. just over there, just down oh, one oh. I, I will say though i felt bad for him and you could kind of tell in his face because it was a bush <laughs> apple if you saw it, <laughs> I'm like oh gross <laughs> yeah yeah that that would go down and come right back up yeah, exactly. that was right, me. Right. It might be like hey that's a good one what are you talking about <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you're at a racetrack and you hand someone a beer to drink make sure it's a good one yeah, yeah. i don't know about that apple <laughs> it's just a normal beer yeah. yeah none of that flavored stuff <laughs> yeah his his sick flow and his sunglasses he had going on it was just like perfect moment for yeah. coors to come in and get him on board <laughs> yeah he's making a name for himself that's right, right exactly yeah, exactly uh but there you go there's your xfinity race uh series results for so the uh, dead on noah, tools noah austin and who else for the uh, aj Almondinger. there you yep. go aj yep he's on it and then yeah yeah Who's the, who's the fourth one? I'm trying to I'm trying to look it up. Gibbs is it, car. So there's is a Gibbs it, car, a is JRM it, car. Is it Daniel Hamrick? Yeah, I think so. It could be. I, I, I know. I don't yeah. know. I'm trying to look it up, but I I okay. So Hamrick came home third to earn his championship fourth verse. Uh, there you go. Over yeah, Hamrick. Yeah. Okay. There so you go. there we go. Go Noah. Right. So I I don't know. Well, it'll be an interesting one come next week. I don't know who's got an edge, but. I don't know. Shoot, somebody at JRM and Hendrick needs to uh, be calling like Bud, you know, Bud or Coors or something, and getting <laughs> them on sponsorship because you got Noah Gregson chugging beer right after a race. As soon as he gets out of the car, you got Kyle Caitlin, Larson's yeah. wife Larson. chugging beer. <laughs> yeah, and no kidding. Come on, you, they're literally supporting you without supporting it. Come Marketing on. team is failing. Yeah. Oh man, the, the, the commercials would be fantastic with. Oh this. yeah. Yeah. Just have them come into the start finish line like it's like an old boxing style where they're face to face and they're just like, "What's up? What's up with you? Let's do this!" And then <laughs> I feel like the should have to be. We should start doing that, uh, Jake. I'm down. All right. <laughs> if we ever win at CNS, just have someone in the stand, like we man up there in the flag stand with just a cooler. Toss me a beer. <laughs> I, I will totally do that, but I, I don't know good. how much they'll like me getting in the car and taking it back to the pits. Ah, beer, but, no, know. it did it. <laughs> I blew zeros. <laughs> <laughs> it's got water in it. It's, yeah. yeah, it's good. So uh, anyways, all right, all Jake, right. give us the rundown. This is a oh, good race. Man, I watched this one. I, I, I was excited about this race even though it was kind of during the Broncos game, I was like, I don't even care about the Broncos at the current moment. They're boring to too. watch anyway. So I'm watching this too. race before. I was supporting them, Dan, I was there. <laughs> I know, you were texting us. I'm watching on my phone right now. I was. Uh, that was awesome. Um, cool. Well, I mean, shoot, there is so much to talk about. I don't even know if we have enough time to talk about this race. So <laughs> I'm just going to kind of go through the first couple of stages real quick, and then we'll kind of get into the uh, nitty-gritty stuff here. Good stuff. The good stuff, because – Good stuff didn't really start happening until 50 laps to go. So uh, pretty much uh, same thing, you know, girlfriend who's the hottest, who chugs the fastest beer is on the pole. So <laughs> apparently Kyle Larson's wife chugs enough beer that he got on the pole this one. So your top five, 
Joey Logano, Martin Truex Jr., Danny Hamlin, Chase Elliott, and Kyle Larson. So Hendrick team to uh, start on the pol- uh, first row. And then uh, I think Kyle Larson went out to a good lead for the I don't know, better 40, 50 laps to start. And then Chase Elliott's car started coming along and he ended up taking the lead. Stage one was pretty clean. Um, no big accidents or any roughhousing yet, but everybody was running pretty clean. Uh, so your top five for stage one was Brad K, William Byron, Martin Truex Jr., Kyle Larson, and Chase Elliott. And then I think going into the pits during that stage caution, Kyle Larson got caught speeding onto pit road. I think he actually was pushing another car into the pits. Actually, no, that was the second penalty he mm-hmm. got. First penalty, he just got caught speeding into the pits. But uh, that put him all the way to the tail end of the field to start the second stage. So uh, same thing. Um, Chase Elliott got out to the lead and I think pretty much led every lap in that stage. He had a dominant car. Alex Bowman, uh, I can't remember where he started um, in the stage two, but I know it was pretty much right around 10th outside the top 10. Had some damage on his front end, but apparently it must have helped because his car was flying and he got up to second there pretty quick. And was even chasing down Chase Elliott there to end stage two. Um, but it was a good little stage there for Hendrick Motorsports. Uh, Kyle Larson, I think, even kind of got back up into the top t- uh, 20, top 15 toward the end of the stage there. But top five, uh, Danny Hamlin, Martin Truex Jr., William Byron, Alex Bowman, and Chase Elliott. So this was setting up for a great final stage. And it was pretty clean for the first part of that last mm-hmm. stage. Then, like I said, with about 50 laps to go, uh, excuse my French, yeah, all hell started breaking loose. You had Martin Truex trying to get up there, stay Mm -hmm. up in the top three. He ended up getting into a car, uh, tore off his left front. Yeah. Uh, Then he started bouncing all over cars, slamming against the wall, got got into it with Kurt Busch, put him (laughs) all the way into the back. Well, Brad K. Uh, K. took out Chase. Yeah, yeah, Brad K. took out Chase. He Uh, locked himself in, by the way. Yeah. Yeah. Two stage wins. Kyle Larson drove back up into like the top five and then got caught speeding again on a caution, sent him all the way to the back. So that pretty much ruined his day. Cause I think that was with like about 30, 20, 30 laps Something to go like that. Yeah. Yeah. And then, um, you had Alex Bowman there sitting in like fourth or fifth, making his charge back up there. And you had Denny Hamlin up there in the lead for probably the last 60, 70 laps, but Alex Bowman was starting to catch him. So, um, battling side by side, in and out for the last like 10 laps. Um, even Alex Bowman on a restart. Sorry for the noise of the dogs. Um, <laughs> Which one is it? Uh, that sounded like bell. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, it was kind of interesting on one of the last restarts, I think with like 15, 20 to go, Alex Bowman kind of drove into Denny, you know, it was just a normal bump and run, but he felt bad about it. And literally he even said after the yeah. race, Moved out of the way, and you could tell he moved all oh, the way yeah. up the track and literally let him go by and took the position back. So at well, least he knew nice. he knew Denny was going to take him out. Oh, yeah. yeah, exactly. Like so Denny's like, not going to go in there and do like the same thing, like just move you up out of the groove. No, he's going to go in there full force and like literally right. take you out. Circuit yeah, exactly. of 2017. He won't give a shit. <laughs> oh yeah. So yeah, it's set up for a good little uh, battle there for the last like ten laps, and it was no, you know. Um, did not disappoint because the last 10 laps were probably the most exciting part of the race. Uh, he had action all over the track, people bouncing and diving and dipping and dodging and wrecking <laughs> and spinning and all kinds of stuff. But after all that melee, as most of you may have watched the race, Alex Bowman drove into uh, the inside of Danny Hamlin a little too hard and he admitted it, you know, got a little loose and just trying hard. I want a grandfather clock, man. I'm going to start going for it. So, you know, ended up spinning Danny Hamlin and and ruined his race to win. But, you know, uh, it is what it is at that point. So your top five uh, finishing this race, William Byron, Martin Truex Jr., Brad Kay, Kyle Busch, and Alex Bowman. And even there, uh, breathe, Jacob, breathe. <gasps> <laughs> there you go, Mark. Like there, excited. Hold on. Let me, let me hydrate. There you go. <laughs> While we wait, I'll also say when they're coming to the checkered flags, you see uh, Brad K try to. I was yeah. getting to that. Oh. How they were just, <laughs> you know, and, and Kyle Bush, you know, he's right. Like, hey, there's nothing to have won there. You know, why are you not making it? Hard? 
but yeah. you know, you still race hard. But to you the still end. race. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I mean, get it. You can't gain any more spots, but you can lose more spots. So yeah. you're still racing for a paycheck at that point. Yeah. So hey, do you want a third place paycheck or do you want a fourth or fifth place paycheck? So you raced all the way to the end. Hey, but, I have um, a lot of pain on my go kart bumper from this. <laughs> yeah, from that, that, that same right. move. This yep. one right here. <laughs> um, but yeah, that, I I don't know. I'll, I'll get your guys' thoughts on this. You know, Kyle Bush and I'm I'm going to mention this in my uh, green flag, black flag, but. Uh, to me, I don't know what you guys think there at the end afterwards, you know, yeah, they're bumping and beating on each other all the way to the green, you know, checkered flag. But to me, it kind of seemed like Kyle Bush came all the way down, uh, going into turn two or turn one. And, you know, Brad came up and they just, boom, they ended up hitting each other and spinning. Um, Are you talking about after the race? Yeah, sorry. Here goes. What's going on with my dog? No, I'm my dog is going <laughs> crazy over something right now. Um, <laughs> you never know in this house. Um, but to me, you know, Kyle Bush is like, oh, I don't know why he spun me. But to me, it also looked like Kyle Bush was trying to come back down on him. So, what are you guys' thoughts there, right at the end with Kyle Bush and Brad K? Go ahead, George. I mean, coming to the checkered flag, I mean, it's just racing. Like it's just two guys fighting for position that have been trying to go all out. Uh, Kyle Bush looked like he had a little bit of a push going into the corner yeah. and he was running that high line, like majority of the like last 50 laps or so. Um, so I don't know if he was trying to cut the corner coming off or whatever, but I mean, it's just two guys getting after it. I mean, yeah, I was, I was hoping something like that was going to happen, but I was hoping yeah. it was like going to happen. if they were the leaders that would have made yeah. for a hell of a, more bigger deal but like to kyle bush's point after the race is over it's like you know we were fighting for a second we're both out of it so what is yeah. what was a big yeah. deal yeah you know brad don't, had to win don't, that race so. don't more or less like use your head in a sense like you're coming to the checkered don't r ruin your race car right for something that doesn't matter like right. it, it it the race is over for the championship's over for both of you so yeah. mm -hmm. but i like the fact that they're racing hard and they're banging doors and going all the way to finish don't get me wrong but to yeah, yeah to his point like i don't want to see somebody brewing a freaking nice race car that could be used uh, you know yeah. for uh analytics points and all that yeah. crap you know all the stats and stuff that they put into it after the race is over so um but yeah, the deal that happened going out into turn one. <laughs> I was like, gonna say that. I was yeah. like, like, okay. <laughs> he tried to wreck Brad and yeah. Just, yeah. 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 And then it just, killed just, the car. I don't know if you guys yeah. saw that. Yeah. I was wondering, like, why are, are you not firing you threw, back up? Or? Yeah. Then you threw a little temper tantrum and tried to wreck him, and then you wrecked yourself. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> That's just Kyle Bush in a nutshell, like yeah, right yeah. there. Well, and then you had Denny pulling his little, you know, crybaby antics there at oh, the end, and God. oh, that's just short track racing, you know, uh, <laughs> ru ruining Alex Bowman's celebration. Like it didn't sound like he was going to do a huge burnout, but I oh. mean, you never want somebody uh, to ruin your celebration because he's being a little, excuse yeah. my French bitch, you know. So well, that's exactly what he was being. Yeah, like, but uh, like, oh, well, to that point, like, dude. You, you got punted. You don't yeah. like it. You know, it's funny. It's like you're going to be the first one to sit there. I, I, if it did happen in 2000, what, 17, 2008, 17. 2017. Yeah, okay, it happened, what, four or five years ago. But still, you did it. And at the time, you were like, oh, no, you wrecked you and blah, blah, blah. That's just racing and this and that. But then when it happens to you, you get all pouty bitch face. Yeah. Like you can't have it both ways, bro. You either mm -hmm. just like – you, you can get it pissed off. That's totally fine because I would be pissed off too. I mean, he's gotten – this guy, he's gotten punted before, and I was pissed. <laughs> you know what I, I mean? Was too, but, no. but you know what? Mm. You, you don't take your car out on the track and go no. wreck the dude while he's celebrating. Could you imagine yeah. if that happened? Like somebody goes up, um, Kyle Clegg wins the race, and I don't, I'm just going to throw a name out there. Landon Bernie goes up and freaking drills him in the, in the hood because – it was something to happen like you I, you park it for the rest of the year oh yeah like instantly and, I, and I, i'm to your point i know nascar uh does their penalties and fines and stuff on tuesday so it'll be interesting to see tomorrow yeah i on, on they're not gonna they're obviously not gonna do anything to where he has to sit right with. we know well, yeah but i think yeah. money and a sensitivity training like yeah. kyle bush is probably on the way for the whole joe gibbs racing right. team really i mean 
Because well, he even he carried it on after the race is over. Yes. Was talking about Chase Elliott fans, and which like day, what did why, where did Chase Elliott come from? It has nothing to do with Chase Elliott. Like you're sitting there <laughs> talking about Chase Elliott fans. What does that have to do with anything? That yeah, just Alex Bowman the is the one who yeah, he won the race. Yeah. Like yeah, yeah. You're bringing up Chase Elliott. Yeah. <laughs> like um, you're an idiot. Yeah. <laughs> like I said before the podcast, he says Chase fan, Elliott fans aren't all there, dude. You're not all there, so I don't know what you're well, talking about. I know I'm not all there, but it's fine. <laughs> hey. Yeah, uh, but yeah, wow! Well, what an exciting. Sorry to ruin it for you there, Marky, but um, yeah, it was a good race. So you know what? I'll just help you out here. Just watch the last like fifty laps. That's really the most important part. So um, it was fun. It was fun yeah, to watch. It was a fun race, and it, it brings some drama into the last race of the year. So well, and Truex too. Like his whole nose of his car was all caved in, touching yeah. that tire. Yeah, yeah, that whole left front was caved into the tire. Yeah, and... in the last ten laps. Yeah, yeah. And I was waiting for that tire to blow. Got back into fourth. Yeah, I was, I was waiting for that tire to blow. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, so going into next week, we have championship weekend. So we got the Camping Truck uh, Camping World Truck Series, the Lucas Oil 150 at Phoenix, uh, the Xfinity Series, NASCAR Xfinity Series Championship. I'm not sure who the sponsor is for no, that it's, one. it's it's that's the, the, they just say oh. NASCAR, yeah. I don't know oh, why, really? they, why they have a race for the – or they sponsored for the truck series and not the rest. But yeah, right. I was just thinking, like, why would they do that? But you know, it's an NASCAR, whatever. Yeah. Um, and then you your know, Monster it's... Energy Cup Series Championship on Sunday with Kyle Larson, uh, Chase Elliott, Denny Hamlin, and uh, MTJ Martin Truex, yeah. Martin Truex mm -hmm. going for the uh, Battle of the Championships. So, um, leading into our next segment, uh, George, take it away. Well, I mean. We're basically just going to make our picks. Let's mm -hmm. figure out who we think is going to be. I, I'm pretty sure we can already guarantee who Brandon's going to pick. Yeah. <laughs> He's wearing the dudes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, uh, I guess I'll, I'll fire us off. Um, I think it's a Hendrix cars day to lose, to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. I think Denny Hamlin's definitely going to come out and have a little bit of a vengeance, but I think that he's going to, uh, he's going to be too much of a hothead. And that's where I think it's going to get to him is that instead of coming out and I, I mean, it's one thing for people to rise to the occasion and to try and prove somebody wrong. I think he's doing it because he just is piss. And when you, mm -hmm. when you drive like that way, you don't drive, you, you mm -hmm. don't drive well. Like anybody has ever driven most race car drivers in the past when they're driving all pissed off, they're missing their marks because they're just, out of sync right so i don't i don't think he's gonna win it to be honest with you he's never really been that great at phoenix um but to be honest with you i think it's kyle larson's to lose i think the, i think he's gonna come out it's gonna be him chase elliott and denny hamlin for sure i think they're gonna be the ones to be talking about i don't think truex is gonna be fighting for it i think he'll probably finish fourth but it'll be one of those three but i'm gonna go with kyle larson because the dude is just he's on fire and I, one of the Hendrix cars is going to win, I think, no matter what. But I think it's going to be Kyle Larson. So who's up next? Jake? I guess that would be me. Um, yeah, I, I like the stats that you put here, uh, Brandon. Oh, You're welcome. Did you hear that? That's what Curs. they came me for. <laughs> That's why I stopped. <laughs> uh, Rotate the can nice and slow for you. you <laughs> <laughs> oh, Marky, you're funny. MTJ, whatever, man. <laughs> <laughs> Don't get Wee Man upset. He'll take you out. And I I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, who do you want to uh, win, Wee Man? I'll just say it so you don't crash me. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I, I like the stats uh, just to kind of showcase here. Uh, MTJ's average finish was 15.39. Um, he's had, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, top five finishes with one win out of – how many starts there? Like a lot, yeah. 30 a lot. or something like 31. that. 31. Yeah. 31. Yeah. Um, then you had Denny Hamlin here. His average finish was 10, 10.78 and his best finish one and one twice and had several top five. So he's, he last couple years, it hasn't been his greatest, but he's That's finished it. pretty good there. Yeah. Nice. Um, Kyle Larson, um, what 11.64 he doesn't have as good a uh, sample size but he's had several top fives in the um phoenix the last what 
three years, so he's got a good chance there. And then our uh, good old returning champion, uh, Chase Elliott, his average finish was 11.18. There is an outlier there. 2019, he had some problems and finished 39th. So, you know, taking that one out, his average finish was actually probably around 10 easily in, yeah, probably better than that. So yeah. he's had one win and several top fives. So just kind of thinking about all that, um, I don't know. I'm kind of like George. It's it's Kyle Larson's to lose at this point. So I, I really pulling for Chase Elliott, too, to be back-to-back champion. But, I mean, that five car is pretty strong. So, um, yeah. I, I don't I don't think anybody else is going to win this race. I think it's definitely going to be one of the top four that goes out. I mean, that's happened the last, what, like six years, yeah. seven years, where the champion was the winner of the race. So I don't Which know. is cool. I love that fact. Yeah, it, yeah. it gives you parody know? and some drama and stuff. So yeah. mm-hmm. I, I, I honestly think one of the – whoever wins – the championship is going to win this race, and I, I think it'll be Kyle Larson. So, yeah. Brandon, it's no surprise, but let's just hear your pick. <laughs> um, yeah, I and I I forgot totally that MTJ won in spring in March. Mm-hmm. I totally forgot that he did. Um, but yeah, I mean, no surprise who I'm going with. I just think that, like we watched last year, dating back to Martinsville, Chase had to win that race to make it to the championship four and he prevailed. He did it in dominating fashion. Fast forward to Phoenix of love last year. He's coming in as the underdog really, and fails pre-race inspection three times has to start from the rear. And I'm thinking, okay, that's it. Whatever done. Good run. Glad we made it. Whatever <laughs> comes back in. I think fair weather it. fan. Yeah. <laughs> He, uh, well, now it's like a common theme for him. He fails post race inspection. You're like, hey, we're going to win today. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, anyway, and he comes up through the field, and I think he was in the top 10 within the first 50 laps or something mm-hmm. of that race. Just incredible. So, and he, you can tell that he loves the pressure. He doesn't get worried. He doesn't, like you just said about Denny Hamlin, he doesn't worry about anything else. He's focused. And I, I just think that he's, I think he has a chip on his shoulder because he feels like he's not number one at HMS this year. And I think he's going to go out there and prove it at one of his better tracks. And like I said, last year he, he did it in past however many cars, 42, 40, whatever it was to do it. And I think he does it again. And I think like you guys said, I think all four of those cars will be up front. I, I don't know. It's, it's hard. It, it throws me off the MTJ one there because if you look at his stats, it's, Mm-hmm. Not very good for him, but I think yeah. that, um, and they haven't released the uh, lineup obviously yet, but obviously it'll be uh, Larson up there, I imagine. Well, no, because no. Chase finished 12th. No, I think they're actually qualifying this week. Oh, it, they are. So they they're have practice actually, Friday and, and then they're qualifying, qualifying yes. Saturday. So they're morning. actually legit real racing this weekend mm-hmm. thank oh, god i'll be damn all right so, yeah, they talked about that on the broadcast for the cup races just, yeah uh Makes sense. i Letart. was watching broncos mm-hmm. so that yeah makes yeah so <laughs> steve latart and uh, dale jr were talking about that how they're excited because they be normally huge. don't show up for the broadcast until saturday for the xfinity race right and then for the cup race so they're they're super excited to uh come in on a friday watch practice watch qualifying and then through the cup race on Sunday. So, so that'll be a call tell sign to see how guys. Oh yeah. hundred mm-hmm. percent. And then you yeah. could have guys trim their car out just for speed and no downforce to get up front to start the race. But then you guys, uh, it, I mean, who knows? I, All that I, strategy starts coming back yeah, into yeah. play. <laughs> I'm not going to look too far into qualifying. Like if chase my pick, for instance, qualifies True. 12th or 15th. I know the guy, can do it. I know he's in the equipment. He knows that track. He can get around there. I'm not going to read too far into qualifying. And I think if the the two JGR drivers and the two HMS drivers are smart, if their crews are smart, in my opinion, this is what I would do. I wouldn't go out and just trim the car out for speed just to get up front. It is a long race, long race. Mm-hmm. You want downforce. You want that car to handle, get better as the tra- as the track fades into the dark, and, mm-hmm. or not dark, but you know, evening. Um, so that's what I would do, but, um, yeah, that's interesting. I didn't know they were doing that. So, yeah. Yep. Um, but yeah, that's my yeah. pick Chase Elliott. I think, uh, when the pressure's on and, uh, when the gun, the gun is aimed at him, he, he performs. So 
Hey, yeah. if anybody wins it other than Denny Hamlin, I'll be happy. Amen. Yeah. Yes. That's if, Denny Hamlin, if Denny Hamlin wins, right. we're not doing a podcast next week. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, All right. right. So I guess we'll get into our uh, next segment, and obviously none of us owe each other beer from uh, last. That's last close. Season, so it was close. We were so. close. I was All close. of us were close. <laughs> yeah. So uh, anyway, um, we will get into our water cooler talk, and this segment is presented by Team Denver Home. So if you're again looking to buy, sell, or find out the price of your home in the Denver and surrounding areas, go check out www.teamdenverhomes.com. And the fine ladies over there will get you squared away. So my water cooler topic, um, I think you can probably allude to one of us was going to talk about it. So I'll, I'll just do it. <laughs> <clears throat> so um, I'm actually not going to get heated for once or vent or, and I was off of social media the whole weekend. I didn't post anything. <laughs> Proud uh, of you. <laughs> well, I, I didn't have to do with Chase Elliott. So I'm like, hey. <laughs> uh, anyways, so we were talking a little bit before the show. Um, and I think uh, Jordan might get into a little bit uh, in his segment here, but um, I don't recall a season where there's been so much drama and so much store, so many storylines to follow, whether it's, uh, I mean, it does have a lot to do with HMS versus Joe Gibbs as it should, because they seem to wreck each other or whatever uh, a lot. But anyways, uh, I've never seen so much drama and, storylines in a single season ever and it's just it's great for the sport of nascar no matter whose side you're on as fans of the sport we love it because we're talking about it we're talking about it on mondays and tuesdays and 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 then oh is this rivalry gonna uh continue on to the next week and the next week and so on and so forth so anyways uh i feel like the sport needs this kind of stuff to keep it the fire the passion alive uh but anyways um it's it's just it's just something I wanted to bring up. I think that even if I was a Denny Hamlin fan, <clears throat> excuse me, or a Kyle Busch fan, you gotta love it. Or a Kevin Harvick fan, you gotta love mm-hmm. it because it's mm-hmm. we're talking about it. it Storylines. Yep. Yeah. If you look on social media, it's brewing. And I mean, not to mention everything else that happened uh, with Brandon Brown winning at Talladega, and we know what happened after that. But NASCAR is on the map. Everybody is talking about it, whether you're a fan or not. And I just love it because it's, you know, sometimes in our sport, uh, it seems like NASCAR is kind of dying and fading and they could do this and they made that change and it was dumb and whatever, but all this is great for the sport. So that's, that's my water cooler talk. Just wanted to throw that out there. No matter what side of the fence you're on, you're talking about it. We're talking about it. And that's great for the sport of NASCAR. So I will pass it to Jordan. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm kind of just going to piggyback <laughs> off of that. Cause you know, we were kind of chit chatting about this. Um, <laughs> NASCAR lost its um, personality a little bit when you had the button up drivers like Jimmy Johnson and stuff like that. So there's not too many of those guys. You don't see the uh, Jimmy Spencers anymore, the Dale Earnhardt's, uh, just the real vocal Tony Stewart's, you know, yeah. just those guys that just tell you like it is. Mm-hmm. They don't give a crap what you think, whether they're right or wrong. They're just going to speak what's <clears> on their mind. You know, too much where you had, yeah, guys like Jimmy Johnson and Jeff Gordon, where they were just saying all the right things all the time. And it just became like, this is this is boring, to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. You know, but then you have complete opposite end of the spectrum where you have guys like Kyle Busch, where you just absolutely hate everything that comes out of their mouth because they just have a (laughs) attitude. You know what I mean? Like he just has a bad attitude. Yeah. You know, it's, it's like you could be you could be such a bigger face for NASCAR if you just had a better attitude and, and you were more of a personable person and spoke your mind and said what was right instead of going on there. Um, I'm just sitting here doing the interview because I have to. And then yeah. somebody asked the question. I'm doing the interview because I have to. Like, dude, I'm just here so I don't get fined. Yeah, I won't, I'm just here <laughs> so I don't get fined. Yeah, exactly. Like, uh, so they're kind of they're. When this kind of stuff comes up, this, yeah, again, this is what creates those storylines, everything like that. I wish that people would just be a little bit more open and realistic and be personable and not be so um, buttoned up anymore. Like Noah you know? Gregson in the Xfinity. He is making a damn name for himself. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. By doing Mull- stuff like that. Yeah, mullets and sunglasses yeah. and chugging beers. And chugging beers and stuff like that. Like, just be personable. Punching Daniel Hemrick. People can relate to. 
have that's where written. that's that's why a bunch of people love <laughs> Dale Earnhardt is because he was that blue collar guy, came from nothing, and people could relate to him. You know that younger generation, like when we were growing up, Dale Jr. with his hat backwards right. and stuff like that. You know what I mean? Like he was just somebody you could relate to. Versus nowadays, you don't you don't see too many of those personalities, and you don't see it on the racetrack either. Like everybody's, you know, they need that that banging of doors and yeah, fighting to the finish. So, in a sense, like I love what Kid Denny Hamlin did, just not in the sense of how he did it. Like, don't right. use your race car to go out there and smoke somebody while they're trying to do their smoke show. <laughs> Wait till after the race is over. Go up to him, go beat his ass in the pit lane. Yeah, that would have created a hell of a story. I'd be like, yeah, look at that. They're oh yeah, they're throwing bows. That's awesome. <laughs> he still would have probably so, got his ass kicked anyway. So hey, he probably would have. <laughs> he seems like a weenie. Can you guys but, tell we're not JGR fans? Yeah, oh, it's not even <laughs> just about JGR. You know what I mean? Like it's it, just his they're, drivers. They're yeah. they're they are. They become just a bunch of a whiny, you know, rich kids in a sense. I know Denny Hamlin didn't come from that, but it's right. and neither did really Kyla Bush. But that's how they present themselves. It's like you guys are mm-hmm. being whiny bitches. Yeah, suck it up. No, and, MTJ and, did. He's not like that. I mean, he can get frustrated and say his words, but I mean, I I actually yeah. like mpj yeah. he, oh no i love I mean, he's Truex. the better of the jgr he's, oh, he's yeah. the he's the best one like hands down um well he's laughing at denny hamlin's pro series comments <laughs> yeah that was pretty That's funny he just put his head <laughs> down his own teammate <laughs> well and what was it a couple years ago when um he was leading at martinsville and logano mm-hmm. took him out well he didn't even really take him out he just pushed him up the racetrack yeah. and he said i'm just gonna make sure he's not gonna win next week that's all yeah. he had to say Boom. and it created drama mm-hmm. Yep. Mm-hmm. Not this like he's a hack. <laughs> he's not good at driving because did I had the see, lead uh, and he came up and he bumped me. Did he's you a see hack. Austin, or like, Austin come on. Bowman, um, Alex Bowman created a shirt that says "hack" and it sold website. out. Yeah. <laughs> sold, <laughs> sold out like that. And just like the Chase Elliott uh, have a happy off season and or uh, merry off season. Yeah, yeah. yeah, he created that uh, sweater. Who uh, Ethan, my friend, bought one. Yeah, and that sold out. I'm like, you're just Great. creating more money for these. Guys. Right. Yeah. But anyways. Uh. So anyway. So yeah. I guess that was my on water top cooler. of water cooler yeah. talk. So go ahead, Jake. <laughs> I was going to say, are you ever going to get to your water cooler talk here or what? No, that was it. <laughs> um, yeah, we've kind of talked a, a lot about the NASCAR stuff and, and what happened this weekend and, and all the drama. And, and shoot, I mean, I'm, I feel like we're watching WWE, but it's like actually real. So yeah. it's kind of not exciting. Script, not scripted. Yeah. <laughs> first, that's where we need Stone Cold to come out with the winner, whoever the winner is. I hope to God it's Kyle Larson. He goes into winner's circle with his wife and just two beers oh, and it's ah, that that'd would be, be awesome that would be awesome uh, but that's not my water cooler talk i'm gonna kind of switch this one up um mark you'll kind of like this one um <laughs> let's talk a little eye racing um and the mile high misfits uh if you guys don't out there all you scrubbinites uh scrubbinites, watch, scrubbinites. <laughs> <laughs> if you guys don't watch or see anything on uh eye racing or do eye racing Definitely go to the Mile High Misfits Facebook page and uh, like it, share it, subscribe to it, whatever it is. But uh, it's a lot of CNS drivers and a couple people from out of state. And I think we have a couple people from, shoot, I don't even know what states. I think one from North Carolina that just joined up and some other guy from Cheyenne or something. I don't know. But it's kind of a nice little uh, way to have some off-season racing. And uh, just an event that happened on Saturday night. Got me thinking, um, thinking a little bit about this. So my water cooler talk is guys that uh, go out there and they talk a lot and they're <laughs> badass and go out there and one lap to go wreck the leaders and just kind of ruin somebody's night from a good run. So my, if, for all of you people that I race, you know, do some racing. Get on there, do a lot of racing before you join a league full of race car drivers. Get some experience in there. I know it's still a simulator, but get some experience under you because the last thing you want to do is go out and join a league with, I'm not saying I'm a fantastic driver, especially on iRacing. Jordan but, is. Uh, yeah, Jordan is. <laughs> Mark, I mean, Mark wins all the time. Oh, yeah. Uh, there's a couple guys on iRacing that, holy cow, they're just, I mean, Kyle Morris, the guy's phenomenal on iRacing. Mm -hmm. 
And the last thing I want to do uh, is get in their way and, and I'm two laps down or whatever, all of a sudden just do something stupid and wreck the leaders on the last lap. So, um, yeah, uh, I don't I don't want to say too much more, but I would say if you guys are doing that, get on just... Mile High Misfits, <laughs> watch it because they do go on Beehive Media and they, and they uh, broadcast it live. So it's pretty cool to watch there. But uh, if you want to join the league, Definitely make sure you do some good racing. Get your eye racing rating up and then yeah, come I join agree. a good league. Yeah, Marky, that's just because I haven't been running the last two weeks, bro. <laughs> <laughs> and I want to add to your topic, Jacob. When I'm, I'm, it. <laughs> when I'm running and I'm if say I'm leading, which happens occasionally for me, but and well, not even that. Like I could not be leading and running up front, battling for a win or battling in the top five and chasing down someone. And you come up on lap cars. I don't. I don't normally talk. Like I don't key my radio on iRacing and talk a whole bunch. I'm too focused in, and I, I'm not that talented to be talking in the whole thing. But that's when I do key up the mic. When after about a lap, uh, and the lap cars don't move over, I'm like, "What are you doing? Hmm. You're the race is over for you. It's not like we're winning real points and we're, real money and all of these things. I mean, most of us were not in the pro class, or whatever, but." Like, what are you doing? Move out of the way. And right. and to your point, I'm not going to name any names or give car colors, car numbers, but there's a specific car at CNS, and I'm hesitant to even to say the, the division. <clears throat> Don't do it. <laughs> every, Brad, Brad. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Just kidding. Brad. Every, every time uh, they, this said person goes out there, they, I mean, they don't have the best equipment. It's okay. We all, you know, whatever. But they get lapped all the time, and it's okay. They're out there trying. I applaud them, whatever. Yeah. But they don't get off the bottom, and yeah. they make the leaders come off their groove, move up, which affects it a little bit. Their lap time is going to be slower. I don't care who you are. If you have to move up to the mid to third lane, whatever. But and it just every time I'm out there, it pisses me off. But uh, see, whatever. and and I'm a firm believer, depending on what track you're at, like where the lap traffic should go so like at cns this is just me talking i think that the that lap traffic should go high at cns i and get up out of the group and everybody should just stay up close to that wall get up in the marbles to keep it under control get up out of the way mm -hmm. but if you're out of track so like i racing uh we were at one last year um where i was leading the race at lucas oil raceway well you're running the high groove that whole time so it's like that's a track where in instance, get right. down, get low, get out of the way. Mm -hmm. Whereas, yeah, there was a couple instances where I was leading and a couple of laugh cars, they were just right up in the groove. And yeah, I get on the horn like, Hey, I'm coming through. And then they don't move. And then I move them and then they get pissed at me because I moved them. It's like, well, you're in the middle, <laughs> you're two laps down and you're in the middle of the groove, like get out of the way. Cause get otherwise, way. yeah, otherwise I'm going to move you. And, right. then, and then you're really not going to like me, which yeah. happened. So, yeah. Yeah, I think it, it comes down to etiquette and knowing your surroundings, knowing the track, where, where the groove is, knowing that you're clearly not fast or true. something, mm -hmm. you know, whatever. But uh, and, Well, and to Brent, Brian's point right here, yeah, pop to pop his little comma. You're absolutely right. Spire, spotters do have a big part in that. But then it go again back in like one of our previous episodes where we talked about some of the classes don't have spotters. Mm -hmm. So what are you supposed to do then? Right? Mm -hmm. So that's where I am a firm believer that every class doesn't matter. Doesn't yeah. matter. They should at least have transponders. And then, you know, the, the classes that they deem don't need them. At least somebody's on the horn. Hey, uh, you know, call out the cars in the back. So, Hey, 34, 44, 62, Leaders are coming behind you. When they come up to you, stay high, you know, yeah. get out of the way, you know, and to your point, Brandon, uh, we, it's just on. I, 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 know. I, I wasn't even talking about him. That's the thing is I wasn't even talking about him. Yeah. And, and, the, and just things I've noticed, not only just at CNS, but like I racing guys just don't even know how to hold a line. You know, yeah. and and get up into the groove. You know, get up into the you know second groove, which is great, and let cars go by. But all of a sudden, they get loose, and oh, I got loose, and then boom, like happened to me on the last race, five laps to go. 
dude gets <laughs> loose in front of me. I hydroplane off his left front tire and slam the car on the ground and boom, the, the motor cuts off, you know? So it's like six of one, half dozen of the other. But it's like, if you know faster cars are coming, especially the leaders behind you, yeah. get yeah. up out of the groove, lift, well, let them go by. And, and then, then I racing, you know, like a lot of times too, like I will get lapped because you got all these guys that are running seconds faster per lap than me. I'll see them in the mirror, and if they're a halfway, half straight back and coming, I'll key up the mic and say, X, Y, Z, whoever you are, go right, go low. I'm out. Like, that's how it should be. Right. But anyway. Yeah, I, I always do that. If somebody's coming, and be like, hey, take which way you want me to go. Go high. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Everyone thinks we're talking about them. And let's, keep them <laughs> let's, keep, let's keep them wondering. <laughs> At least he had a chuckle behind it. <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, so, yeah, that, that was my water cooler talk. So, yeah. All right, Jake, um, take us into the next one. All right, so we're going to get into one of our next favorite uh, segments here, Green Flag, Black Flag, presented by Great Frontier Insurance. If you're looking for some better coverage at low rates and cover more of your uh, toys, your house, your cars, your uh, RVs, trailers, everything like that, give Mike Dowling a call at Great Frontier Insurance. I know, and I guarantee he could probably beat Ooh, Mike, anyone. Mike, Mike, Sixty percent of the time, he can beat everyone every time. <laughs> statistics. <laughs> statistics. Oh, it's classic. But, uh, I was thinking long and hard about this one, like I was saying before the podcast about shoot, what do I want to do? But that news of Kyle Bush today having to do sensitivity training before the 2022 season. That got me thinking, green flag or black flag, is this a little bit late on NASCAR's part? Should this have been done probably last year, maybe the year before? Green flag, black flag, Brandon, it's here. Um, absolutely. For Kyle Busch uh, or in general? Are you talking Kyle Busch? Kyle Busch, yes. Yeah, 100% green flag. Um, I think uh, we talked about it, I don't know what episode number it was, when he almost ran over those guys in the pits. And just got a little whatever it was fifty thousand dollar fine which he makes that in uh one day that should have happened then like you almost injured someone you need some type of training and then um like you said that i mean that was more uh serious obviously you almost injured someone mm -hmm. slash killed someone whatever could have happened but the sensitivity training like i said maybe it's more than kyle bush but he is the ringleader of that group but you put a microphone in front of his face and i get it i mean i I've never really been interviewed like that before, probably never will. And something bad happens like that. You're heated, your emotions are hot, and they stick a microphone. It's great for TV. It's great for the fans to hear their reactions right out of the car, right after that happened or whatever. So I get that. But every single time the guy just says something and they, they're dropping F-bombs and all these things. And, uh, you know, it, it's national damn TV and they're doing this and you're a paid professional at the highest level of motorsports. And you, like George said earlier, he just, it's hard to watch an interview because he's just like, mm, I don't want to talk to you. Yep. The car was shit today and da da da. My team sucks. And thanks. To all these dumb yeah. Questions. Yeah. Thanks. Here? Thanks to M&M's and interstate battery. And then he walks off like, <laughs> yeah, dude. Just, so yeah, screen flag. This right. should have happened a long time ago. And before I shut up and, and give it to Jordan, I actually, and not just because Chase is my favorite uh, driver, but I actually tell Mike Lane all this time, all, all the time, if you listen to Chase Elliott's interviews, whether it's before the race, especially before the race, obviously, because he's not pissed off and in the moment, but even after the races, he is so mature for his age mm -hmm. and he doesn't pop off at the mouth. He just says, hey, you know, hey, merry off season and happy Christmas. You know, mm -hmm. he doesn't cuss and he doesn't tell tell everybody that Alan Gustafson sucks and that his team sucks and the whole nine yards. Like, mm -hmm. there's something to be said right there. And then I'll shut up and pass to Jordan. But, yeah, screen flag. <laughs> okay. Well, just to, to piggyback off of your comment right there, it, it, there's a huge point to be said about that. Yeah, about, like, basically whining and crying and then a guys like Chase Elliott. And then I loved it when Tony Stewart would get on there <laughs> and talk. Because the man, he just had an elegant way about making fe people feel stupid. Yeah. You know, God, I wish we could have went out there and, and put the cars in reverse and just did yeah. the whole race Tell going back. I, if we could have gotten one more race or <laughs> one more wreck, that would have been great. Like, you know what I mean? Like, he didn't have to say it in such a negative context. He's just yeah. a smart aleck about it. And it's yeah. hilarious. If he were to just do something like that, like have the brains to do it, he'd be mm -hmm. so much more personable. Anyways, um, 
to be honest with you, I I don't think it's a green flag or a black flag. I don't think that even going through sensitivity training with him, he's gonna care. Yeah, because that's just Kyle Bush's personality. He doesn't give. He'll go. Okay, am I done here? Can I? Yeah, go I was gonna say he'll probably just show up and be like, "I'll probably have some answer to it." Click yeah, through it. he's not even gonna care. Yeah, it's like, gonna be yeah, online. Yeah, yeah. It's oh, yeah. <laughs> Kyle Bush sensitive sensitivity training should have happened to him back when he took out Ron Hornaday in the truck. Yes, like. If you really wanted after then you should have after a long time ago now you have to deal with him because you created this guy because you didn't mm -hmm. do anything about it yeah, you created this monster you created yeah, this exactly. monster so what does it matter at this point like he is who he is he's not going to change it yeah. um i know that he apologized for his comments which was totally uncalled that's a, for that's a pr you, move you, well i know it's a pr move but using the Joe r word right, in that yeah. in that in in that situation like dude oh, you got to have some common sense yeah oh yeah Wait, yeah. what word did he use? Uh, I didn't actually hear the it. R word. Um, the R word. Oh. Yeah. He... Yeah. Let's not say it on ours and get. Some no, I'm not. No, 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 I'm no. not. No, no, no. <laughs> like I don't want to say it because it's just like you yeah. got to have some common sense, dude. I didn't hear him say that. Yeah, he he said it after the race was over. So, anyways, yes. but yeah. to that point, like I don't I, green flag, sure, but like I don't think it's going to do anything for him because okay. again, he's just going to walk through it and he's going to be like, "Uh, can I get can I get out of here now? Am I done?" Yeah. Okay, thanks, I passed. M &Ms. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thanks, M Ms. Bye. <laughs> so, so yeah, that would be my answer. He's just, he's just. Brad K said it best. You know, Kyle Busch is an ass. Yes. So, mm -hmm. there you drop, go. Drop one drop. of my all-time yeah. favorite quotes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> cool. Um, um, I guess I'll go next then. Um, go ahead. So, yeah. So. Uh, alluding to the JGR guy, it seems like a common thing. We should just name this episode JGR. Yeah. <laughs> uh, anyways, JGR team. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so all the recent history, like I was talking about in my water cooler talk, between JGR and HMS, dating back to Hamlin wrecking chase at Martinsville in 2017, Kyle Busch wrecking chase at Darlington last year, and now most recently uh, reverse Bowman spinning out uh, Hamlin uh, yesterday. So my question to you, to green flag or black flag, if either of the championship four drivers are leading, so say it's an HMS driver or JGR, and there's an opposite or opposing team in second charging for the lead, do they dump them and do we see a repeat of all this that's been going on? For So JGR is in lead, does HMS wreck them? If HMS is in lead and JGR is behind them, do they dump them, green flag or black flag, Jacob? Uh, that's a tough one because you hope and whether it's a JGR team or HMS team that they're not going to go intentionally dump them. I mean, there's always going to be some beating and banging and some bumping and running, especially, hey, championships on the line, last lap, last turn, can't hold anything back now. But do it in a way that you're driving hard not intentionally doing it like if you go in there harder just trying to get that extra couple inches and end up kind of you know bumping a little move them out of the way and go under that's like larson did it at darlington just right like yep mm -hmm. yes exactly yeah. exactly and that that to me would be fine if obviously if it's an hms driver on the bad end of it i'll be mad but it's whatever <laughs> but i just don't want to see a guy like danny hamlin chasing down Kyle Larson, let's say, and he's, you know, half car length back, really isn't going to make it. And all of a sudden, just last turn, last lap, just goes in full bore and just dives his car down in there. That, that's what I don't want to see. So um, if they can get your bumper, it's fair game. Only means they're faster. That's true. That's true. But, you know, like I said, if you're a car behind, a car length behind, and you're really not the last three laps, you're not, you know, catching them per se. You're just kind of even. I, I really hope they don't do something like that. So, so say um, yellow flag. <laughs> I, I'll say yellow flag on that one. I, I I would say green flag. The fact that you know I want to see some parity. I want to see some good racing, and especially if it's last lap, last turn, just to get you know a good little battle going to the start finish line. I'd say yeah, mm -hmm. but don't do it stupidly. Do it smartly. So right. oh. green flag, but like yellow flag. <laughs> oh, green. Oh, just you. I mean. I did this move. <laughs> what am I going to say? You know, I can't sit there and criticize somebody for 
you know, you can't do that. And then I'm well, sitting you didn't there. Never dump us. No, I never. I'm not talking about dumping, but yeah. it, like I'm talking about like what we've been seeing. Like it's one yeah. thing to go in there full bore and use a guy as your bumper, and then right. literally right. just send him to the fence. I mean, yeah. that's just like wow. Okay, you really did do that. You just mm -hmm. literally Kevin Harvick taking yeah. out Chase Elliott at the Roval. That yes. was that was an intentional dump. Yeah. Yeah. I totally get that. But yeah. if you go down in there, Dale Earnhardt style on the last lap at Bristol, you go rattle up there cage. and <laughs> rattle their cage. Yeah. You're free game, man. Like, and to Dan Alama's point here, like if you're faster and you're going to sit there and, and get in the way, I mean, obviously you're going to try to hold your position, but I'm going to do everything I can to get around you. Mm -hmm. And whether that means to send you up two car lengths into the, into turn one or turn three, I mean, yeah. it is what it is. So, I well, mean, I I hope it comes to that. To be honest with you, I I want to see that kind of a finish at the race. I don't want to yeah. see somebody it come down to, uh, you know, a snooze fest at the end. I want to see yeah. a green white checkered and guys get banging doors going after it. And yeah, yeah. Well, the reason before I pass off Jordan for his topic here, the reason I I said that is because I think Denny Hamlin obviously last night today even more he's come out with more comments saying that he came from nothing in the whole nine yards and, and he said quote unquote excuse my french i'm fucking bringing it so i think he has a lot of passion and anger and i think that if he's in second right, oh yeah with five laps to go and chase or any of the hms drivers for that matter are leading mm -hmm. he's 100 percent sending him to the wall so that's oh yeah gonna... he's not he just admitted it like yeah. he, it's i don't even think if it comes down to the last lap i think if somebody's just mm -hmm. in front of him in general he's just gonna dump him. yeah <laughs> he's oh, not, he's gonna yeah. How, how awesome is it gonna be if there's a late race caution with like four or five laps to go and they're literally the championship for our one two three four Oh, they talk be about some some drama right Ooh. at the end of the race. Yeah, I'll be watching that one off some fireworks at the end. It'll, of it sure. it'll be interesting. <laughs> All right, Mark, you're officially our bleeper. So I'll try to I'll try to I'll, I'll try to click on. <laughs> but anyways, uh, Jordan, what you got for green flag, black flag? All right, so I had a conversation this morning with the uh, uh, gentleman on Facebook um, about some different topics. He was rather heated. And uh, he wrote an article about how fans, dedicated fans, if you will, uh, should not watch the race at Phoenix. And the reason being because he doesn't like the playoff format. So he thinks that by people boycotting the, the final race, um, that it'll send a message to NASCAR, blah, blah, blah. So my, my question to you guys, the format that is currently in place with this like playoff system do you are you guys green flag green flag black flag are you for it jake go ahead so for people do not you, watching no do you like the format do you like the playoff oh, like format? The format uh <clears throat> yes i mean i i like the format um you know it, it brings some parody it brings some drama into it you know and it it makes drivers drive harder i mean you know like brad k at the end of the race there he literally wasn't gonna move on but he was still trying his hardest you know and and that's what it's all about especially to get into the actual 16 round of 16 the last race being at daytona next year that is good did they do that they were at daytona this year too right to get in to the chase uh, that, is that next year? Is no, it, Talladega was the cutoff race. Yeah, was it as because yeah. Daytona is going to be the cutoff race yeah. next year? Yep. Yeah. yeah. So I, that's that's exciting to me. Like guys are going to be. I mean, that race in general, they guys yeah. last five ten laps. They're yeah. beating Spin the wheel. Each exactly. <laughs> exactly. They're they're going to be trying even harder now, especially yeah. guys yeah. that you know. Hey, this is our chance to actually win and get into it in the last race. That's so, it. The small um, one car teams exactly yep. so um is it kind of a weird format yeah but it brings it to be more like all the other sports where it's a play it, it feels like an actual playoffs and it gets i feel like it gets more people involved but you know some, some people that are true dedicated nascar fans from you know before the chase was 
you know, put together, they're like, no, let's just see some guy run away with it. Well, like George said earlier, I wouldn't watch it. I'd be like, well, exactly. what do I need to watch it? I already know who's going to win. All he's got to do is start. Like, <laughs> I think when was it uh, like Jimmy Johnson's second or third championship? I think it was a second championship. Yeah. He basically just needed to start the race, run about 50 laps, and he could literally park mm-hmm. the car and win the championship. Dale Jr. Oh, did that for his second Xfinity race. Yeah. Uh, championship. Championship. Yeah. yeah. It's like, how, how he actually, was that? Yeah. He well, he was out of that race. Remember, he was in the pits and he gun jumped out of the car yeah, and, start and he would start celebrating. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I thought the race was still going on. His car, though, but yeah, still uh, though, he he didn't need to finish the race. No, he didn't. Yeah, he didn't he need to win it. Yeah. So, like, how boring is that? This this actually brings some actual entertainment to the race. Mm-hmm. Like I just said, what if the last four championship four are one, two, three, four with five laps to go? That to me oh, is yeah. more exciting than being like, oh, Jimmy Johnson or Chase Elliott was going to win it either way. So he finished 30. Oh, I agree. Okay, cool. Oh, how, <laughs> I'm glad I didn't watch that race. You know, so, right. yeah, uh, I, I'm i green flag for this format. So, Brandon, what, what do you think, Brandon? Uh, yeah, I, uh, I read the article as well. And I thought it was uh, well put that if you're – driver if your favorite driver is not in the championship four and i i got a couple ideas on this so if 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 say chase elliott is not was not in the championship four this particular year am i going to watch yes i'm going to watch because i'm a nascar fan i love the sport of racing i love nascar and i want to see who wins Mm -hmm. like for instance if chase wasn't in there obviously i'm going to root for kyle larson if kyle larson's not in it i'm going to root for mtj i mean the list goes on I am a NASCAR fan and I'm a racing fan. This is something I take pride in. I mean, we have a damn podcast about it. So yeah, I'm going to watch. But even mm-hmm. still, as just a being a NASCAR fan, you're going to, uh, out of all the four drivers, you're going to pick one that you want to yes. see win. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I'm still going to watch no matter what. I mean, Chase has only been in the final, in the championship four. This is the second time. Um, so I, I have a lot, I have a, a leg to stand on there by saying, hey, Chase hasn't made it. I rooted for other people. I rooted in 2017 or 18, whenever MTJ won his, I was rooting for him 100 percent because at that point he was, you know, furniture of racing, the whole thing. So there's the point. I'm a NASCAR fan. I'm not a fair weather fan, and I don't just tune in when Chase wins, or else, I mean, you'd what tune in maybe three, four times a year if you're lucky. Mm-hmm. Uh, and how are you going to know anyway? But anyways, and then so I'm green flag. I love the. The format, I think it brings a lot of excitement. It keeps us guessing. We don't mm-hmm. know what's going to happen. We don't know what the drivers are willing to do to advance, which they literally will do anything, it appears. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And the only thing I'll say that if I were had a if I had a free pass to change a rule in NASCAR for the day would be take away the stage breaks. Take away that, and I think we'd have a better race because then it would all come down to strategies for the end of the race and not at two other points in the race. But either way, I think if someone just wins or gets so many top fives, like like you said before the show, Jordan, if we didn't have the playoff format and it's not just because I dislike this driver, Denny Hamlin or Kyle Larson would have walked away with this walked championship with a long time ago. Done. Two races and ago, then, it would have been locked up. And then – We'd be forced to say, "Well, I can tune on, uh, tune in on Phoenix, or I can tune in on Martinsville." But I, why does it matter? We already know who won the championship. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of a reverse kind of psychology deal. Um, I, I don't see how going back to an old, like I said, I'm up for changes and tr- trying new things yeah. with NASCAR, like this next gen car. Uh, you know, we've talked about it enough, but you know, I don't know. I think. Going back to that old format of playoffs, I don't think that's what the fans need. I don't think that's what viewership needs. I think it would kill the sport. And, you know, because it's exciting. At the end of the day, we're talking about stuff for an hour and four minutes now of one race. Yeah, so, one race. yeah. yeah. no, I, sure. uh, I'm, a, I'm an NASCAR fan. I'm a racing fan. And I'm going to tune in because I don't know what's going to happen. So that's that's my thoughts. Right. You know, well, and I see Marky put a comment here if we want to pop that up i think they need to make it where the top 10 and points have a shot at the title and phoenix not just four okay i see that's where i mean like it, it's i don't think the format is completely 100 foolproof right they i i like the idea of giving people a shot and i like the fact that like mediocre guys have a shot because in this article as well they were talking about how they don't like the fact that like the michael mcdowell's they 
you know, they have like a crap season and they're and they're in the playoff system. But that's what you want because they earned it. They earned it. Like you have guys, you have guys, um, even in other sports. Let's just say teams start off 0 and 4 in football, and then they get to 500. And then they get on a hot streak right before the playoffs. They make the playoffs, and then it gives them a chance to win because they got hot at the right time. Exactly. (laughs) They got hot right at the right time. Same thing can happen in NASCAR. Mm -hmm. A guy can start off the season complete crap, like 10 DNFs and all this crap, right? But then he gets like one or two, one win. Let's say he gets one Mm -hmm. win, but then he's finishing the couple top 10, stuff like that, and starts to get hot and gets gets into the chase, and then shoot, yeah, what if he pulls off three wins or Mm -hmm. whatever? Like, Mm -hmm. you don't know. That's what kind of creates the fun part about it is because you just, they, all you need is a chance. Yeah. And it it can be reversed like last year with Kevin Orbit. I thought for sure he was stealing the show. Right. Kind of run away with it. When it mattered most, he fell on his face. Same thing with in the playoffs in any other sport, especially football, because they only get one game. Same thing in NASCAR. You get basically, I mean, you get three races in a round. But, but still, really only get one race. Because if you have one race where well, you're football, bad. there's a 50-50 you're just, chance you're going to win. And mm-hmm. NASCAR is a 1-in-40 chance you're going to win. So. 1-in-40 yeah. chance. But, yeah. they, but if you have one really bad race, you're pretty much screwed. So you have to be mm-hmm. consistent. Well, and and just like we see with all these cars failing tech, they are pushing the damn envelope these yeah. in the playoffs. Yeah. They're mm-hmm. trying everything they can. The teams are they're putting parts on the car and doing things to the car that they haven't all season, saving their best for life. Right. It's great for the true fans of NASCAR right. and the viewers. That's so to, to Mark's point, like the the top yeah. 10, that could be a suggestion. I, I do. I think they'll ever do that. No, I think they kind of like this like small format. But what I, I agree with you 100 percent when it comes to the stage points thing. Yeah. Get rid of the stages. So stupid. Yeah. yeah. Like, Get rid of it 100%. That doesn't make any sense to stop the race and give them a points for leading one quarter through the race. Like, yeah. doesn't. Yeah. It, Here's a halfway yeah. home uh, trophy. Here's yeah. a free scoop yeah. of ice cream to Baskin Robbins. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And no, like, if you're going to do that, then go to Saturday night racing, do heat races, mm-hmm. and get yes. more guys points for there winning heat races. I like that idea. Split them up. I, I, this is why I love Daytona and the dual races because. It's an actual race, it and matters. that and that gives you it matters. It gives you your seating into the Daytona 500. If they were to do that every week and shorten the Sunday race, do yeah. it on Saturday night. Have your heat races on Saturday night, and then mm-hmm. do short 30 lap, 40 lap, 50 lap races, and then do 150 laps. Doesn't matter what track you're at, or, or not. Well, obviously it matters what track you're at, but if do, you know 150 miles or mm-hmm. 125 mile races. And then have the one race on Sunday. That would be mm-hmm. awesome because then you have a whole week of racing, and then it kind of builds that up. Mm-hmm. You know, make them shorter and put in heat races if that's what you're going for. Then do it. Don't just mm-hmm. like ruin the Sunday race of 500 miles by putting in stage points. It's so dumb. Yeah, I yeah, agree. so dumb. That's why I kind of like the way SRX did it this year. Yeah, exactly. Two heat races in your average finish between the two heat races. That's where you're going to start in the last race. In the last just race. like every like Saturday night in America. <laughs> yeah. <short> track racing. <laughs> Why is it still alive? Because people... It works. It works. Yeah. It works. Yeah. Sells it works. tickets. Sells tickets. Exactly. So And beer. Can't forget about the beer. <laughs> <That's cool. laughs> oh, yeah. I'm almost out. Dang it. Well, uh, that should lead you into your next segment. That does Ooh. lead me into my next segment. <laughs> so... Presented by the great folks of Coors Brewing, and more specifically, Coors Light, and the great tasting piss water that keeps us going throughout our podcast. He did it. He I did, did it. it. <laughs> Took a bite and, and, it, and, it, and it, it was flawless. It was perfect. But anyways. You like how big I made the text there for you? <laughs> <laughs> you made me read it. It's like 72 font. Oh, yeah. that's awesome. Uh, so here we are with the uh, Give Me, Give Me Some Love, and it's our listener Q&A review Give us a shout outs. Tell us what you want to hear. We'll answer questions, anything that you guys want. This is your guys' segment. Um, so feel free, hit us up with some comments. Um, but we do have a couple of questions right off the bat here. So Mark Bremkamp, we're talking to you. This was brought to you uh, by him through our Google, Google Docs. Uh, so the first question that we got here, and I'll shoot it to you guys, uh, what would your thoughts be on a monthly one-hour enduro race at CNS, weather permitting? Sincerely, Mark Bremkamp. <laughs> Jake, go ahead. Uh, 
we were kind of talking about this before the podcast. Um, I forgot to shout out. <laughs> um, I don't know. It's kind of tough. Uh, I say no. I mean, you guys, you already got the 300 lapper special race. Um, I don't know how many guys would be interested to come out once a month just to bring their car out for an hour. Um, I mean, obviously it'd be a little bit more than an hour getting prepped and yeah. I don't know if they'll practice or not, but <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't know how much guys would be into that. I know a lot of them are into just doing the 300 lap race because you could just literally go out, get a junker car, put a roll cage on it, and just put a motor that'll last 300 laps. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I, that's tough to say. I'd say no, but that's just me. Um, I know this kind of coming from uh, like I-76, Callahan Speedway, Honor Speedway. I know they do like a thing where they'll have some series during the winter once a month, and then the very last race is like a hour long enduro race where it's just all pretty much street stocks um, and just who can last the full hour. So it's fun to watch, but on dirt, I think it's a little more fun than asphalt, but that's just me. So Brandon, what do you think? Um, I, yeah, I think one month on the frequency might be a little much, um, but I think, if we took uh, like the format, the one that's in, the, what, what is it, two weeks away, three weeks away? Um, if we took that one and moved it up maybe before championship weekend on a Sunday or something, I think that would maybe be more appealing. And I don't know, I've never been to one of these and uh, been invited to one or whatever, but uh, I think uh, monthly is a bit too much. Maybe if you wanted to add another one to make it two per year, I think that would be Two would be good for yeah. like an off season. Yeah, I think that would be ample, but once a month, I think a little too much. Yeah. Guys are focusing on family and it's holidays and getting their car prepped yeah. for. And our wives year. and girlfriends would kill us. I mean, <laughs> yeah. well, our, ours would. Some of them out there, they're literally the help pit crew. So, true. Yeah, you never true. Know. <laughs> that is very, very true. true. Shout out, Brad. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. I. I I agree. I think that once a month, probably a little bit much. The enduro races are fun. They are fun to watch. Um, I think, yeah, they should move it to more of the middle of the summer. Having it in November and late October and stuff like that, I think is a lot of the fans have kind of, you know, yeah. gotten into the winter mode and football. racing is over with and football's on and it's yeah, hockey. And... How did I watch racing? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> well, for me too, like it's, it's freaking hey. freezing out there. I remember when we used to go out to I-76 for the winter series, and you're just like, what are we doing out here? Yeah. I got to wear a coat it underneath the suit. We go from being hot, as you know what, in the yeah. summer to, to no. freezing cold. Yeah. We'll, we'll uh, sit here in I-Race. It's fine. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, That's exactly. where I'm at. It's like I just jump right back there, <laughs> and I'm good to go. Brad, um, Brad, we were talking about your wife being part of your pit crew. Yes. We, we, we were saying that the uh, wives and girlfriends probably wouldn't want us gone another yeah. race every month. Because she's she badass. My, our, <laughs> yeah, exactly. our support us, and they'll go with us to like you know show the car off on a car show. But when it comes to turning <laughs> wrenches and pulling tires out of the trailer and yeah, stuff, they're true. like, next, "Don't you next have level. like a next crew level. to do that?" Next yeah. level. So, she, shout out to your girl, man. She yes. is she's helping you do everything on that car. So, when uh, Scott Brebkamp was, I know he left, but he was telling us uh, when she, when she was pregnant. Remember when he when oh, she yeah. pushed his car and she fell? Yeah. <laughs> oh, and I don't mean to laugh, but it, it was a funny story. But yeah. Um, but anyway, yeah. So there you go. There you go. Give her a give her a shout out, Brad. That's <laughs> right. <laughs> All right. Cool. So our next our next question: uh, What would you guys like to see more of in local racing? Seems to me the local level has gotten too serious. Think we need more drivers out there who just want to have fun. Whoever wants to take it, go ahead. I, I have opinion on it, but I'll save it. Go ahead, Jake. I'm still it's trying to process <laughs> um, I mean, we kind of alluded to this earlier this year. Um, I think before we, I think maybe it was actually like our first actual live segment or a podcast um, where maybe to get more people involved from other tracks and out of state is to do kind of like a, a rotation of tracks like the legends do it and then then the bandoleros and race at cns and then the next race race at i-25 and um 
get some of them drivers. Like I know there's probably two or three drivers at uh, I-25 Speedway that never came up to CNS this year. And I know there's a couple of guys at uh, Intermountain Speedway that never came up to CNS this year. And I would, excuse me, I would love to go down to Pueblo and race I-25, especially since with the guys that we race against every race at CNS, that would, that would be fun to me to kind of travel and, and have, have that experience. So it would make it a little bit more serious just because, you know, it would then be tr- a true tr- like Colorado state champion, right. but it would bring more people into the local racing in all of the tracks. So, and it probably would bring more fans to the track. So um, for the fun part, I don't know. I don't want to talk badly about anybody, but I think the fun part is taken out by not doing things for the drivers especially the ones that are committed and marketing and giving them good races, big money races and Amen. get them excited to, to race again, you know, just bring some excitement somehow back. And that kind of starts from the top and all the way down in, into getting everybody else involved. So what that means of how to do it, I'm not sure, I'm not the brightest crayon in the box, but I do know that I would be more excited if I knew two months in advance that on like September 12th, we're going to have like a $10,000 to win race. I'd be way more excited uh, about that instead of just like, all right, well, it's race number eight. Hopefully this one doesn't get rained out. You know what I mean? So, yeah, yeah. but Brandon, what do you think? Yeah, I agree with you uh, about the uh, big payout, big money races. I think if you're going to do it for one series at a local track, you need to do it for all of them. And I don't care if the car cost $60,000 or if they just got it from the junkyard and put a roll cage in it. I think you need, obviously, the money is different in every class, obviously. But I think if you're going to do it for one, you need to do it for all. Uh, That will make every driver of every series um, more excited to prepare the cars, get them out there. I think, again, what you said, Jake, about the regional series like the Legends and Bandos do, um, because with the current schedule, hey, we race this weekend, but then we're off again for four weeks. Well, then we kind of we're excited after we get the car back home, work on it, fix whatever we had to fix, and then it's like we sit there. Yeah. So I think having that consistency of, okay, we're racing every other week or every three weeks or whatever, so we know and we can, we can keep that those emotions and that drive passion there. And then the last thing that I'll say to this, uh, and it's more about the fun thing uh, I would say, uh, is keep the rules consistent. Great example is these, um, and I don't, I'm not calling anybody out, but these competition yellows, that's not exciting for anybody. That wrecked a lot of race cars this year. And I'm just gonna say that. So if we can keep the rules consistent and if there's people like like Kyle Busch in the Cup Series, for instance, if they, and I'm not saying this pertains to anything, but if it, there's people that need some kind of talking to or disciplinary action, keep it straight across the board for every series, every driver, no matter what your last name is, uh, how many points you have, how many wins you have, and all the things. That would make it more fun because it sometimes seems like at every short track that there could be, uh, well, he's this guy, so we're only going to slap him on the wrist, but this guy over here, we're going to, you know, throw the book at him, you know? So I think maybe rules across the board being more consistent would bring. So, and I'm not saying we don't have fun. Racing is the damnedest thing. I mean, we love it. This is why we have a podcast. This is why we do what we do. Um, so yeah, but anyways, George, what, what do you think? Well, before you uh, go, George, I got to throw this out there too. <laughs> Sorry to interrupt, but they used to do this when dad was racing is each class before they maybe their main event or something so like for the gams if we're running with the legends and late models or something it doesn't matter like for our main event have the have us go first and have all the cars go out on the front straight sit there all the drivers get out and do it like driver introductions like each class will have it at least once like what and, they do with the arca series yeah exactly exactly like they do with the arca series let the let the drivers get out wave maybe say a word on the mic they or whatever for the super lates like yeah every weekend yeah back then and back in the day that would be fun i would love yeah. to be out and sitting and you know i don't get a chance to win and jump out of my car and see everybody and they you know not everybody mm-hmm. comes to our pit afterwards so it'd be cool to be, just be out there and yeah way and stay high and yeah exactly that, Sponsors, that would be fun. sponsor airtime i mean well 
and to get into my point, I'll basically start with that. It's a twofold situation because if you make the fan experience better, the driver experience is going to be that much better because the drivers will bust their ass when the stands are completely full and there's all kinds of excitement going on on that side of the racetrack. Because yeah. then, you know what I'm saying? So it was really funny that we we're kind of talking about this because what was it today or yesterday? It was Ian Clark. And I don't know if he's watching or not. He posted, uh, and I know oh, a bunch of guys watching that CD cover. Oh yeah, where they had they used to have played the songs right. for each individual class as they come out on the track. I remember that. Mm -hmm. I do remember I that. Too. It's something as little as that, just as the track doing something like that, selling the train whistles at the vendor shop. They don't even have a vendor whistle. shop mm -hmm. anymore. I was just telling Michael Ann that we were driving up to Cheyenne and we were playing that uh, boogie woogie choo choo train song. Yeah, exactly. Like, they used to yeah. play this right before the trains Every came time. out and I would Every freak time. out when I was a little kid. Every time. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, then, and like I said, they used to have a vendor shop right there mm -hmm. underneath uh, behind the, um, the food stand, the yeah. concession stand. Uh, Joe Joe Star used to sell his um, sell his pictures in there. They had like little mini race cars, the NASCAR yeah, ones. You could buy T-shirts. It was little all buttons. Cars. yeah, little the buttons, buttons, flags, you name it. You they had like a huge thing back in the day there. And then they used to have vendors out front, and it didn't matter what weekend it was. It wasn't even like a sponsored event, but it would be like it, one night it would be like kygo night and they'd have kygo out there i thought you were gonna say ky jelly i was like <laughs> <laughs> ky jelly no KYGO. Awesome. <laughs> like the radio you know the, yeah, the yeah. country radio station they used mm -hmm. to have a whole booth sitting out front and they would have live people talking on the radio come right. out to Colorado national speedway yeah. we're doing giveaways and all this kind of stuff you don't see that stuff anymore mm -hmm. that's where it goes wrong for me yeah. you have to make the fan experience that much better and then the drivers will show up and then because you're making money so you're making money on that end so then you have more to put into the driver aspect because then you can entice drivers by putting up these ten thousand uh, dollar races and stuff like that because you actually have the influx from the people <laughs> mm -hmm. so it's it, it's kind of a twofold uh, um so i don't know who does their marketing or who runs the marketing department i think i have an idea but i'm not going to name names but they're not good at it. <laughs> like just plain yeah. and simple. I, I think, I, there's so much ahead. more you, sorry. There's so much more you could do nowadays with the social media aspect too. Like, podcast. The, well, you can have a podcast. I mean, we, we kind of do that now, but they don't have anything. They have one person doing like Instagram, but they don't put anything on Twitter. They don't put live updates anywhere. They do at the end of the race. They'll do a little bit of like a live video of like the winner of the race. Put like a 20 second Facebook live of somebody standing on top of the freaking box there on, on start finish line mm -hmm. doing a live feed of the race. Yeah. Cause last year they did that because obviously there was no fans to do, but there was like five, 600, almost a thousand people watching at some points last year, just watching the races of somebody right. holding the camera. Yeah. You don't have, obviously you don't want to give it all away, but do like the first five, 10 laps, get people excited for it. Yeah. You know, do some advertising Facebook, promotion ads pay a hundred bucks it's like a yeah. hundred bucks and you can and you can serve that crap around to the local mm -hmm. area nebraska you know kansas mm -hmm. colorado and every time somebody clicks on it it's like it reduces it by like five cents so you put a yeah. hundred bucks in just to get your name out there like there's mm -hmm. so many things you can do but well, they, they don't do it i say they used to hire you you know shit. I'll freaking <laughs> do it pay me and I'll, I'll i'll get fans back in the sands i promise <laughs> well maybe go. maybe mark your Brad or somebody can kind of tell us why they don't do this anymore. But I know that Curtis Heldenbrand, he's he's got his own company that does the videography stuff. Mm. And he used to put yes. together highlights every month of and, all uh, the races Zach together. Morris, that last race. Yep. Yeah. In the, in the trucks. Yep. Yeah, exactly. And why they don't do that anymore, I don't know. But I always, I always liked watching that stuff because, like, if I didn't make it to any of the races, I could at least kind of watch a highlight film of – some of the action that happened that month so yeah right and you could person. find some of these low budget local um like, yeah. like beehive okay the yeah. ones that do for the right eye racing you can find like a low budget youtube people and pay them a couple hundred bucks come out and film the races oh, yeah. and put them post them up on youtube like somebody a couple hundred bucks like big deal but if it gets you 
seven, eight grand from beer sales on the back end. <laughs> you know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, no. why not? Mm-hmm. So, we anyways, great ideas. I that's mean, that's we, where it I mean, Personally, we do it with our Scrub and Tires podcast with Smith Family Racing and Brandon Hall Racing. I mean, we do more advertising and posting it because you have to. Yeah. If you're going to grow your brand, if you're going to stay relevant, quote unquote, uh, theoretically sell your product, you have mm-hmm. to. That's the way the world is today, mm-hmm. and you got to do it. So, yeah, these are great questions. Right? Yeah, for for sponsors too. Like, yeah. I kind of feel bad for some of the sponsors that actually sponsor the track because they don't really do anything to highlight their even... sponsors. Other than the billboards being up on the wall in turn three right. and four, I would have no and the, idea and the who the sponsors are the of the race, there. like the XYZ. Oh, XYZ yeah, like the Gallus, Gallus yeah. Transportation yeah. 100 Super Late Model Race. Yeah, yeah. Like, I can't even imagine. And sorry, folks, you're just going off here, but this is kind of my, my <laughs> thing. This is, what I, this is what I do for a living is marketing. Yeah. So I can't even imagine the sponsorship's ROI after how much money they put into it to not even know like us we go every week and i don't even know who sponsors the freaking track <laughs> i couldn't tell you who's you don't even know the sponsors track. the podcast and you're saying <laughs> <laughs> well <laughs> i mean what <laughs> that's, self, that's self-promotion yeah. Yeah. but yeah i mean so 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 there you go that's that's where I, what i think is you have to you have to risk you have to put in I know that they repaved the track and stuff like that a couple of years ago which was it was much needed but like Joe Starr talked about on the podcast we had him back when Chevron owned it he took pride in it they painted the walls every week they made sure I mean those stands are just they're I mean I'm afraid to walk up them some days because there was, yeah getting up to the spotter stand there was sometimes like, like sometimes it's sketchy. Like, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Like, it, it it needs some upkeep. It needs a facelift. We, the drivers, and everybody will help. Just yeah. tell us. I mean, I'll, I'll go out there and spend well, an afternoon yeah. putting in some new boards. If yeah. it saved you a couple bucks, like, I don't well, care. How tacky does it look to have, like, these 40-year-old boards and then randomly two brand-new boards? Like, <laughs> I mean, I will, say, I, I will say Pain. we're, uh, and I say we, CNS or whoever, we're doing a lot better than other states, other tracks. So don't get us wrong. We're not just bagging right no. now. Yeah. But we want to make it the best, yeah, that it can be. Because it can. It it has been that way. That's yeah. the thing. Is it? Because we've seen the tracks. That I've are going. seen it in its heyday, and I've seen yeah. it. It's one of the honest. It's one of the best race tracks, like mm-hmm. race tracks, in the country. Oh, yeah. It is one of the coolest three eighths mile. It's three eighths mile, right? Yep. Yeah, so Just it's one of the half, coolest or, three yeah. three eighths mile configurations, especially in the Midwest. Mm-hmm. Like, and it's in a perfect area. Yeah. There's plenty of parking. There's plenty to access there. Like, it really is a good setup. If it just, like I said, if there were just some things that went on in the back end um, to to help get it there. I don't think it's huh. dead. I don't think Colorado Racing is dead, no. not by any shot. Because if you go out to some of these dirt tracks like I-76 and Calhan and Holyoke and all those places, those stands are packed. Like I've been out there. They're, they're full every week. And mm-hmm. and there's a ton of race car drivers that go out there every single week. Now, you've seen the modified division out at I-76. There's like 40 cars. Oh God. Remember that? Like one night we did go-kart there. I think it was a Saturday or I think it was a Saturday night race a few years back before we started doing IMI racing. There was, and I, and this was a total number of cars. There was 182 cars, 80, I want to say 80 of which were modified. Yeah. Because wow. it was yeah. uh, the A mods and um, the the B mods, right? Yeah. It was, it was both classes of modifieds out there. At night. Yeah. But there, I mean, and but they, they had, the, had the late like, models too, because they, yeah, they had like 20 late some models. late, yeah, super, 20 super late models out there. You have like 40 or 50 mini sprints. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, It literally sounds like when we go to Talladega that Saturday night before that, I think they do it like Friday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, but we always try to go over there at least once the Talladega short tracks, what they call it. Mm -hmm. And it's a quarter mile dirt track. And I, I mean, red farmers there every, I mean, (laughs) they literally just like you mentioned, have like, I'm shit you not 200 late models and 
yeah. what other class stocks and stuff like that just mm -hmm. d main c mains and yeah. you literally they don't get done until two in the morning and it's almost like yeah, i'm tired like we gotta yeah. go mm -hmm. but their stands are just butt to butt and mm -hmm. i don't i mean they do i mean like i said we're not comparing apples to apples but we just want to see it get better right, right. Yeah. And, right. and i believe it can Oh, yeah. I just think it and takes it's going the, to. Yeah. the right, oh, yeah. yeah, the right. I mean, Ryan Blaney and... put his put the yeah. track on his car <laughs> twice this year, so I mean, obviously it's a good track, but let's kind of like yeah. you know get some people up in the higher yeah. stands of the track. I will just volunteer. Put a little more effort. That's all we're asking. Right. One of the one of the few true three eight mile tracks out there. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Right. It's one of the one of the better tracks that I've ever been to, and we've been all over. Mm -hmm. Me and Jake, we I mean we traveled a lot when we were kids going with the old man back and forth wisconsin iowa all over the midwest and it's it's still one of the baddest tracks i mean the the way it's configured like i said the way it's configured the there's just the right amount of banking lane, yeah the right amount of banking mm -hmm. there's two lanes there it's not just like some of these tracks where they're they're super tight yeah. one way around it on the bottom and then that's it like it, it's yeah. it's a it's a freaking good racetrack it mm -hmm. just it just needs some loving so anyways yeah huge rant there oh, yeah. <laughs> i need more beer <laughs> <laughs> that's what to give me some loving is about that's right i don't even think we got any questions from everybody else did we no we didn't oh boy scott's going off here yeah it's a long uh, <laughs> i'm gonna save that one for you for the brothers to hash out <laughs> what's an episode without some sibling rivalry <laughs> oh, my that's <laughs> funny <laughs> we <go>. and Westview. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow. Well, well, that was uh all right. I was Brad's thinking was... Work, Brad's working on the car, so hey, yeah. ex apology accepted. Hey, hey get, get I'm get glad you, yeah, glad you got the chassis. It looks nice. Yeah, it looks so, the, yeah. It'll, keep it'll posting look... those pictures. Heck yeah. Oh. I want to see some ongoing photos. Absolutely. All right. Well, boys, uh, I guess we'll get into our closing thoughts. So uh, this one brought to you by Built Bar, the official uh, sponsor of NASCAR, the protein bar uh, sponsor of NASCAR, U.S. ski team and U.S. track and field. Go to www.builtbar.com. Use promo code PHR3 for 10 percent off your entire order. Did your mom say how, uh, how she liked them? Oh, she said they're fantastic. She yeah, just she said they're really good. Some so I could try them. But yeah, I uh, love yeah, I uh, if we get together for next week's episode, which we'll which we'll talk about, but I can I can bring you some to try out. Okay, oh, for sure. Um, but yeah, so we'll get into closing thoughts, um, <laughs> Scott. Um, I am just looking forward to this weekend. I the, the race, but all three races really. Um, I want Zane Smith to win the Truck Series. I want Noel Gregson to win on Saturday and obviously chase on Sunday. But again, this is why we tune in because we have no idea mm. who's going to win it. So it's going to be interesting. Very much looking forward to it. And then um, just kind of getting things ready for, for Scrub and Tires podcast for next year and getting some more guests lined up and new new segments and all that good stuff. So a lot, a lot on the horizon. And of course, uh, tearing down our race cars and getting that going, which is on the horizon. So, um yeah looking forward to it should be a good weekend looking forward to everything racing and it's sad that it's the last last weekend officially for now nascar cns before so but uh, yeah that's uh about all i got so what do you got jake oh uh, yeah I'm, yeah I'm, I'm excited just as just like you to watch uh some sunday racing watch the championship and I wish it's like Phoenix is like right there from Colorado, but you're like, oh, I can't go. I know. Oh, you I, wanna, you, well, what's funny is Dustin, uh, who you guys met, mm -hmm. he is traveling to one of our solar farms and he'll be very close to Phoenix. Really? And I told him that, Hey, you should do it. And, but he couldn't work it out and he has to leave Saturday. And I was like, well, just change flight. At least you can watch the Xfinity race, but he's going to be, uh, about an hour away from Phoenix uh, oh. this weekend. I'm like, man. He's like, well, will you fly out there too to watch it? I don't want to watch it alone. I'm like, uh, maybe. <laughs> if you got tickets, I <laughs> yeah. go. For sure. buy, buy my ticket, I'll come. Yeah. <laughs> but let's, anyway. let's just get a junker RV and go sit in the yeah. in RV section. I'm in. That would be the way to do it. 
it is just pile in an RV and go down there and mm-hmm. then just hang out and sit up on the roof and smash beers the whole time. That'd be Hell awesome. Yeah. That'd yeah. be my that'd be my idea instead of sitting in oh, the yeah. sands. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> but uh yeah, I excited about that. Um you know, we got the trade show this weekend. So for all you uh racers out there or people wanting to get into racing, uh the Widar trade show car show swap meet whatever you want to call it is this saturday from actually it's friday and saturday friday i think it starts at like nine or ten and till like two and then saturday pretty much same time like eight or nine in the morning till about three or four o'clock and then the uh banquet award awards presentation Mm -hmm. whatever i guess you want to call it uh, i guess uh cns banquet um <laughs> my mom will be there bring cash i'll bring some beer how about that <laughs> i'll bring your favorite too so straight ahead, trade yeah <laughs> let, let me know what your uh your beer of choice is it's probably what bush light your currency uh, exchange your currency i'll, I'll, I'll even to... tell you what I'll, yeah. I'll sweeten the deal i'll step it up to a keg Ooh. <laughs> and some shaluka now that stuff right there oh. in itself. yeah so because i think we're gonna do all together next week right yeah that's the plan um, this That's this a, one here can try it finally. Yeah, oh, yeah. so we're 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 gonna sign off with doing some shots of Shaluka. All right. And yeah, it's just to see oh. your face at the end. Either gonna be like this or oh, damn. Like, oh, might have to take a time out in the middle of the track. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. We'll make sure it's the Everclear version. Oh <laughs> yeah. That's good stuff. But yeah, gonna be at the banquet. Uh I guess there's free food for the drivers, so Side about that, five dollars for family or crew, friends, whoever wants to go. So don't know what to expect with this. It's the first one, but I'll take free food, sure. So yeah. other than that, excited. I mean, we'll talk about it next fr- Monday too of my closing thoughts, but Tuesday, Tuesday. Looking forward to Tuesday. Me, Jordan, mm-hmm. Dad. Got yeah. got a big uh big meeting coming up. Yeah, I'm excited about that. Uh, Fine tune some things. Uh, we got to get ready for that little meeting. So hopefully we have some really good news uh, after the podcast. And uh, yeah, good weekend last weekend with Halloween and everything. I dressed up as myself from two years Ooh, ago. That's spooky. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I had all my go kart gear on because I didn't. Have, I had nothing else. Yeah. I was like, oh, what am I going to be this year? And I saw it was like. 34 degrees outside right. and I, had, I saw the helmet and i'm like yep. <laughs> that's gonna be a good way to stay warm so let's do that don't you yeah. have all kinds of hunting gear yeah i did but i've been a hunt i've been on my hunting gear for like the last three years and the kids were like don't do that again it's it like stinks all right, yeah, <laughs> all right. it smells like pine saw i don't know <laughs> um no it'd be elk elk you're like yeah estrus yeah that's exactly. what it sounds like oh. elk estrus when i brought my <laughs> yeah. clothes home the other week oh oh yeah all the blood and stuff oh, oh yeah yeah she's it's just like, probably like the hose is outside i just went directly downstairs <laughs> in the laundry yeah. room oh yeah. <laughs> yeah oh that's funny um i think you have some uh big news to announce me yeah you are yeah you're supposed to do this one hey you're dropping the ball here what am all I right doing? i'll announce it yeah, oh, no, I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> fail. Wow. Fail, fail. We did have it scripted, people. I oh, know. I'm missing uh, it. I'm missing it. My bad. So for everybody out there, we fail. are going to have la- next week is going to be our last episode for the season. So, uh, s- all right. Who's pregnant? <laughs> <laughs> Total fail. Brandon, <laughs> Brandon with that rip. Rip beard going yeah, on. Yeah. <laughs> I was I was wondering when you guys were gonna throw that. Uh, out. I totally forgot to call you Rip the whole episode. Uh, yeah, but um, yeah, it sucks. Next week is our last episode, but we wanted to uh, end it with a bang. And I think we all thought, what better way to end the last episode to not only be at here at our shop, but uh, to end it with an interview. So we are going to interview Jeremy Wall. The uh, figure eight champion of this last year and runner up in the super stock. So, um, for all of you out there, definitely tune in last week. It's going to be a good one for not only our last one, but to interview Jeremy wall, that will be uh pretty exciting. So yep. we, uh, I confirmed with him today. He's, he went out and or is going out to buy a, uh, a webcam. webcam. Yep. Nice. So, Sweet. Yep. Nice. You can write it off on your taxes. Yeah, there you go. That's right. 
Oh, so now, now you got the girlfriend in there. <laughs> so for those of you who don't know, uh, her and I dressed up as Rip and Beth from the uh, Paramount series Yellowstone, and it was I did, think we did fire. pretty good. Yeah, I think we did no, pretty it good. It wasn't job. pretty good. It was on fire. Yeah, it, it was good. good. So that's why my beard looks like I crushed up Oreos <laughs> and put into my face. I just ferment it to get the. I mean, we went all out. Uh, you know, Mike Lyon had the fake cigarettes. Uh, oh she even God. put freckles uh with makeup like like uh like beth has so we, oh we, we went all God. out so yeah i don't know when this goes away i don't know oh but, did you just gotta shave it oh, i did <laughs> no i, I mean, oh I, no i like, don't want to do that i know that's what i say like you gotta bick it in order to get it off because otherwise like horse you're gonna have you're gonna have two-tone well that's what I, I was telling my friends this weekend i was like because i have a reddish tint to my beard it's gonna look like red velvet cake <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna have like a two-tone beard it's gonna be underneath it's gonna be red and then you got yeah. this oh yeah well maybe Is maybe girl in all white trashy like that or <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, that's why my beard is all black and I oh, look like I went through a, a puberty spurt or something. <laughs> I don't. Hey, it's uh, never too late to get that spurt, man. Oh yeah. Hey. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, there we go. So way to goof that one up, Jordan. Yeah, I screwed the pooch on that one. <laughs> yeah, looking forward to Jeremy next week. That'll I mean, that'll be fun. Uh, yeah, yeah really so many been, questions. So many questions. Yeah, he's I know exactly good. what. I'm not going to spoil it, but I. Uh, I know what I'm going to ask him. That's I mean, yeah. There's there's lots of things. And hey, <laughs> you guys, actually, right now, now that you know who's going to be on, get your questions in. Put yeah. them on our Facebook page. Uh, hit up the Google Docs if you yeah. guys have questions you want to ask him. Here, let me get hit us up. Right. Yeah, we'll get the link out there for you guys to fill out the uh, the questionnaire, and we'll we'll ask the questions, not just oh, ones yeah. that we want to know, uh, ones yeah, that you guys want to know. Sounds good. Yeah, that would be that would be um, kind of fun. I can share it. Here we go. Getting the link. Keep them occupied. Here we go. Posting a comment. Boom. Boom. There we go. Hit us up. I think should be. Did it go? There, there it is. Go. Yep. There Post you your questions. Yep. Get on that link and just put Jeremy Wall, put your question, do the thing. Don't forget to put your name and where you're from. I know it's <laughs> yeah. like a mandated thing, but don't it forget is to do it. Thing. It asks you at the end of it, did you put your name and where you're from? So. <laughs> <laughs> anyways uh, yeah uh hopefully right. you get that soundboard and everything ready to go for next week because that's gonna we're be on it. an episode with the race cars in the background i mean it's gonna be a good one we're on yeah. it so all right everybody well that is it for us hopefully you enjoyed this episode of course episode 19 we'll end it next week with episode 20 and uh go from there so everybody have a great rest of your week enjoy the races all the activity at cns this weekend um hopefully you see jake out there if we don't come but mm -hmm. uh tell him hello tell him how good of a job or how bad of a job we're doing but uh yeah that is uh it for me so jake jordan send him off into the outro we're good i'm good enjoy <laughs> yourselves all right door quarter clear clear all you new leader checkers are out bring it home come on Jacob, Jordan, and myself would like to say thank you for tuning in to this episode of the Scrub and Tires Podcast. As always, you can find us on Facebook by searching at Scrub and Tires Podcast. Again, that's at Scrub and Tires Podcast.